Welcome to Algebra and Geometry Explained. In this lesson, we're going to talk about how to graph absolute value functions using transformations. We start with the parent function, y equals the absolute value of x. This is a graph shaped like the letter v pointing upward. To plot it, place the vertex at zero, then choose two points to the right and two points to the left. The absolute value of negative two is two. The absolute value of negative one is one. The absolute value of zero is zero. The absolute value of one is one. The absolute value of two is two. Plot these points and connect them. The result is the basic V-shaped graph. Now let's identify the domain and range. The domain is all real numbers, which in interval notation is written as parentheses negative infinity, infinity parentheses. The range includes all values greater than or equal to zero, which in interval notation is written as bracket zero, infinity parentheses. Now let's see what happens when we place a negative sign in front of the absolute value. The function is f of x equals negative absolute value of x. The graph is still shaped like a letter v with its sharp point at the origin, but this time it opens downward instead of upward. That's because the negative sign reflects the graph across the x-axis. The domain is all real numbers. In interval form, that is written as open parentheses negative infinity, comma positive infinity, close parentheses. The range is all values less than or equal to zero, since the graph points downward. In interval form, that is written as open parentheses negative infinity, comma zero, with a closed bracket. If the negative sign is inside, like f of x equal absolute value of negative x, nothing changes. The graph still opens upward. That's because the absolute value of any negative becomes positive. For example, plug in one, the inside becomes negative one, but the output is still positive one. So negative on the outside flips the graph, negative on the inside does not. Let's look at the general form of the absolute value function, which is y equals a times the absolute value of x minus h plus k. This form lets us see how the graph is transformed. For our example, the function is y equals the absolute value of x plus two. Here, a equals one, h equals negative two, and k equals zero. That means the vertex, which is the point h comma k, is at negative two comma zero. We place this vertex on the coordinate plane. Now let's use the slope to plot more points. Since the slope is one, from the vertex we go up one unit and to the right one unit to get another point. From the vertex we also go up one unit and to the left one unit to get a matching point. When we connect these points, the graph makes a V shape that opens upward. The domain is all real numbers, written in interval form as open parentheses negative infinity, comma positive infinity, close parentheses. The range is all values greater than or equal to zero, written in interval form as closed bracket zero comma infinity, close parentheses. Now let's look at another example. The function is y equals the absolute value of x minus three. In the transformation form, y equals a times the absolute value of x minus h plus k, the value of h is three, the value of k is zero, and the value of a is one. That means the vertex, which is the point h comma k, is located at three comma zero. The graph has shifted three units to the right from the parent function. Now let's look at a case where the absolute value graph is both reflected and shifted downward. The function is y equals the negative absolute value of x minus four. In the general form, y equals a times the absolute value of x minus h plus k. The value of a is negative one, the value of h is zero, and the value of k is negative four. This tells us the vertex is at zero comma negative four. On the coordinate plane, first place the vertex at zero comma negative four. Since the slope is negative one, from the vertex move down one unit and to the left one unit to plot a point. 
Reflect that same move to the right side by going down one unit and to the right one unit to plot another point. Connecting these points creates a V-shaped graph that opens downward, reflected over the x-axis. The domain is all real numbers, written in interval form as open parentheses negative infinity, comma positive infinity close parentheses. The range includes all values less than or equal to negative 4, written in interval form as open parentheses negative infinity, comma negative 4 with a closed bracket. Now let's see what happens when we combine a horizontal and a vertical shift. The function is y equals the absolute value of x minus 1 plus 2. In the transformation form, y equals a times the absolute value of x minus h plus k. The value of a is 1, the value of h is 1, and the value of k is 2. This means the vertex is at 1 comma 2. The graph is shifted one unit to the right, and two units upward from the parent function. From the vertex, we use the slope to find more points. Since a equals 1, the slope is 1. Starting at the vertex, move up one unit and to the right one unit to plot a point. Then, from the vertex, move up one unit and to the left one unit to plot a matching point. Connecting these points gives us a V-shaped graph opening upward, centered at the vertex 1, 2. The domain is all real numbers, written in interval form as open parentheses, negative infinity, comma, positive infinity, close parentheses. The range includes all values greater than or equal to 2, written in interval form as closed bracket 2, comma, infinity, close parentheses. If you like tables, here's how to do it. Set the inside equal to 0 to find the x-coordinate of the vertex. For x minus 1, that gives x equals 1. Now choose two points on each side. At x equals 1, y equals 2. At x equals 2, the inside is 1, so y equals 3. At x equals 3, the inside is 2, so y equals 4. At x equals 0, the inside is negative 1, but absolute value makes it positive 1, so y equals 3 again. At x equals negative 1, the inside is negative 2, and the result is y equals 4. This symmetry produces an accurate sketch. Now let's look at how changing the value of a affects the absolute value graph. First, suppose we graph 2 times the absolute value of x plus 1. Here the vertex is at negative 1, 0. Because a equals 2, the slope is 2. That means the sides of the v are steeper and the graph looks narrower compared to the parent function. Next, let's try a different example. Negative 3 times the absolute value of x minus 2 plus 5. In this case, a equals negative 3, h equals 2, and k equals 5. That means the vertex is at 2 comma 5. The slope is negative 3, so the graph is very steep. The negative sign in front flips the v downward, reflecting it across the x-axis. From the vertex, move one unit to the right and go down three units to plot a point. Move one unit to the left and go down three units to plot a matching point. Connecting these gives us a narrow downward opening v. For this function, the domain is all real numbers, written in interval form as open parentheses, negative infinity, comma, positive infinity, close parentheses. The range is all values less than or equal to 5, written in interval form as open parentheses, negative infinity, comma, 5 with a closed bracket. Let's try the function y equals 1 half times the absolute value of x plus 3 minus 2. In the transformation form, the value of a is 1 half, the value of h is negative 3, and the value of k is negative 2. That means the vertex is at negative 3, comma, negative 2. On the coordinate plane, we first plot the vertex at negative 3, comma, negative 2. Since the slope is 1 half, the graph opens upward but is wider and less steep than the parent function. To find points, from the vertex, we go up one unit and two units to the right to plot a point. We also go up one unit and two units to the left to plot a matching point. Connecting these points 
forms a V-shaped graph that opens upward but spreads out more gently. The domain is all real numbers, written in interval form as open parentheses negative infinity, comma positive infinity, close parentheses. The range is all values greater than or equal to negative 2, written in interval form as closed bracket negative 2, comma infinity, close parentheses. Thanks for watching. If this helped, hit subscribe so you can catch more algebra and geometry lessons just like this.